And that's going to bring up the man of the hour. Chalmers hits us with deep to left field. Uh -oh. gets in one high and deep. Better deep. Find his back at the track. At the wall. Your MLB debut, July 25th, 2009, against Cleveland. I would love to know what that day feels like. Hmm. So, so I was in, uh, so I was in AAA in Tacoma, and um, I'd been there all season. I'd been there since the beginning of April, and uh, like you said, I think it was mid July, and I was. I was playing. I was playing pretty well, and my boys from back home in Victoria. So again, I grew up in Victoria. So you can take a ferry either to Vancouver, drive across, right, or you can take a ferry from downtown Victoria right to downtown Seattle. Can't drive, but you can walk on. Or there's the Anacortes that can take you into Port Angeles, right? You can drive on that one. So my boys, they were coming up, and they took a ferry to Port Angeles, drove up, and uh, this was July 24th, so the day before my, my debut, and we had a night game. And they were supposed to be there for the night game in Tacoma in oh, yeah. AAA, right? So there's four guys coming for whatever reason, roadblocks, whatever reason, they couldn't make it. And uh, I've been playing pretty well. I get home, and my roommates, they had their buddies in town. They are all going out. They were having a good time. Um, I was waiting on my buddies who were supposed to be there at the time. And, uh, you know, we were all having a couple of beers and everything like that. And um, they call me and they're like, hey, we're going to be delayed. This is where we're at. We're about an hour and a half out. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll wait for you. This kind of thing. And all of a sudden, I get a call from my manager in AAA that, uh, hey, you need to come back to the field. Are you able to make it? I go, yeah, of course. And I live five, not even a five and a walk from the field, right? So my buddies are talking to me. They're like, dude, you're either getting traded or you're going to the big leagues. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. You know, so I go, I go into the yard and uh, it's about 1130 at night on the 24th. My <laughs> boy, again, my boys are still coming, right? I'm probably like five or six deep. And, and uh, my manager's like, dude, you got to go play left field. We're going to throw on the lights for you. We're going to hit you some fly balls. We're going to get the machine out there and, and start playing left because I was what? playing the entire time, right? <laughs> I'm going, okay, like, what's going on? And, of course, unfortunately, I'm like, five, six, six, six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like there's something going on here. And finally, he's like, no, I'm just joking, man. Like, you're, you're going to the big leagues tomorrow. There's a day game. I'm like, oh, geez. And, okay, it's a Seattle game. It's 1 o'clock, this kind of thing. You're going to be able to make it. I go, of course, you know, this kind of thing. So I head home. My boys are still coming back. So they finally get to the, to the apartment. And in Seattle, they always replayed the big league game, always. The Mariners always replayed. So it could start at 10 o'clock at night. The game was going to replay from the first inning on, that kind right. of thing. And they're going to touch on it. And so my buddies obviously were – they, were, they weren't happy that they got in late, but they're excited to go out at this point. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, okay, you know, this kind of thing. And we're having a beer, and they're getting ready to go out. I go, guys, sorry, man, I just can't make it tonight. And uh, my, t my AAA game was a night game the next day, and they're like, dude, you know, what are you doing, all this kind of stuff. And one of my buddies, I'll never forget it, one of my buddies was kind of like keeping his eye on the TV, and then would look back at me, keep his eye on the TV, and he looked back at me, and, and he finally said, dude, you tell me right now, why can't you go out tonight? And he was pointing at the TV. I'm like, <laughs> I just got called up, you know, this kind of thing. And we have a day game tomorrow. So we all celebrated and we all lost or, you know, whatever. Um, and that night I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep. I literally rolled in my bed all night from, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night all the way through till 8 in the morning. And then I got in my car and I, I went to the yard and, 
um, I was in the lineup that day and playing left field and, uh, you know, it was kind of surreal. It was one of those things that, that happened. And when it was all said and done, it's like, I fell asleep as soon as I got home and it was a dream kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I started getting into a little bit of routine just because of that. Was that the fastest nine innings of your life? 100%. Yeah. 100%. It was a day game. I previously played in front of maybe 1500 people. Yeah. And then, you know, not knowing anything, going home and expecting my friends to come and then uh, getting that call and, and told that I'm going to, you know, the big leagues the next day. And, um, you know, obviously not sleep and roll in my bed. So beyond overtired. Yeah. And then my first game is in front of 35,000 uh, with no sleep. And it's a day game. The sun's up. It was pretty surreal. Yeah. You walk in, it was that, I'm assuming you met a lot of these guys in spring training, obviously, but you walk into that clubhouse for the first time as a Mariner and you see guys like Griffey, Ichiro, uh, Beltre, Felix, you know, like what I, was there a, a moment in particular where you kind of looked around and you said, wow, this is the show. Yeah. So, so actually I had never been to a big league camp before my oh, first call. Out. Wow. So that was my first real experience um seeing those guys and when i rolled in again it was a one o'clock game i think i rolled in at i don't know 9 30 10 something like that and the only person in the club bus was griffey and he came up to me and he's he asked me what kind of wood i was swinging and in the minor leagues i was swinging this pro stock you know whatever and he goes no 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 kid that's not gonna cut it and he gave me even though it wasn't my model he gave me a bunch of wood and it wasn't even his his model but it was other wood that he had had um and i'll i'll never forget i used it for my first ab and we were facing a lefty aaron laffey um who was a later teammate of mine but yeah uh, he got me to pop up to the infield i think i don't even know what it was one one something like that and i said nah man this this because of the bat this isn't for me so <laughs> <laughs> so, so i went back to my my crappy pro stock that they were giving me in the minor leagues but yeah, that was it. And you got your hit, was it the next day? And it was off Cliff Lee, right? Who next you, day off Cliff Lee, yeah. Who you played yeah, with hang, later as well. Hanging curveball, line drive out the middle, yep. Did you like lefties? I, oh, no. <laughs> no, there was a point, I don't know what it was, but everyone was asking me this. There was a point in my career where everyone was like, dude, did he like lefties? And I don't know what it was, but uh, um, there was a point, I don't know about, uh, in 2012 to like 14 or 15 where I hit him pretty well. And, um, no, but I mean, I wouldn't say bring in a lefty to face yeah. me. <laughs> and, uh, no, nobody likes lefties when you're a lefty. No, no. Rene, uh, Tissoni was saying when I was talking to him that he hates lefties. So my only saving grace is that a lefty you only have two pitches. Hmm. That's it. It's a fastball or a slider or a curveball. One of the two. Something is going away from you right. or something hard. And when some – I think there was like two or three years where I actually hit lefties better than I hit righties, which is weird. I don't even know how I can explain it. But when they asked me, what I said was against a lefty, I only had to face two pitches. Against a righty, I had to face four pitches. Yeah. So there was something doing different all the time. and I don't know what it was. But, no, if, if you would have asked me, I would have a righty on the mound all the time. Yeah, of course. So th there was a couple like big days, like kind of external to like you as a player, but big days that you were a part of. And one of them I like I narrowed down was Griffey's retirement. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're a center fielder coming in left-handed stick, you know, got people are looking at you as a potential five tool kind of prospect. And then you have the guy who's leaving, who was the Mariners five tool guy for, you know, X amount of years. He comes back, does his victory lap. And then, you know, that retirement, like, what is that? What is it? Was there some, was there feelings that you had kind of going around that? Like anything special? You know, not, so I wouldn't necessarily like ever think that I was taking or stepping in his shoes. Right. That kind of thing. Like, um, until people said something, it's like we thought that Griffey was done in 09. And I think Griffey thought he was done in 09. And 
the whole off season, there was like a, so the last game I wasn't playing, I actually pinch ran for him when he hit a single in the eighth or the ninth inning, whatever it was. And I was kind of the meme of the guy that went in for Griffey. Like I was the trivia question, right? For the guy that pinch ran for Griffey. And, uh, we all thought he was done. He gave me, you know, a, a bro hug, that kind of thing. Right. And, uh, and then when the game was over, it was against Texas and the game was over. We gave him a big victory lap. Um, and then he came back in 10. Right. And then, uh, Unfortunately, the whole thing that happened in 10 when he, you know, he picked up and kind of left yeah. in the middle of the season, um, you know, that was, it, it wasn't more of a, hey, you're, you're stepping in his shoes. Cause honestly, it's like to this day, who steps in his shoes? Maybe Mike Trout, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, it's hard to say, but I mean, if you're putting that kind of pressure on yourself, you're never going to, you're never going to be who you were meant to be as a, as a player. Um, but when I was that young, I, I don't think I really looked at it like that. I looked at it as a blessing that I actually got to call him a teammate. Yeah. And when she walked away in 2010, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, actually, uh, I was devastated because he was my guy. Like, I played his video games, right? Like, hi, this is Ken Griffith Jr. <laughs> baseball, right? And and it was funny because the younger guys would actually – he signed, like, our, our N64 games for us and stuff like that. Like, he – he understood what was going on yeah. and we were teaching this kind of thing. I was devastated, but she made me realize she's, she's like, Hey, listen, you put this guy on a pedestal and you call this guy a hero your entire life. How many people got to call their hero as a friend or a teammate? And I was like, when I started putting it in that aspect, it, it made it, you know, I was more comfortable with the decision and everything like that. Obviously he had his own things going on, but when, when she put it like that, I realized how more of a blessing it was rather than how devastated I was that he walked away from the game. Yeah. I mean, I would have loved to have played with Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna say, I'm not going to take it for granted. I know a lot of people yeah. would. And yeah. I will tell you this. I will tell you this for all of those people listening in that are Griffey fans, which basically are all of us. Um, you might not understand this, but – everyone looks at Griffey for what he did on the back of his baseball card, right? He was actually a better teammate and human being than he was a baseball player. Wow. And I'm saying that like authentically, like he, he was one of the best teammates I've ever had and just an incredible human being. And everyone knows what he's done on the field, but not many people know what he's done off the field. So, so I just want to say that. Yeah, but, absolutely. That's something I'm glad you have heard. <laughs> Um, the other big, the other big kind of game, like with Seattle, was Felix's perfect game. You're playing center field, and I thought, and I was watch, I rewatched it today. I watched all 27 outs, and I couldn't believe that you didn't get a ball. I didn't. I was going <laughs> to say, I was going to ask you. I was like, I didn't even remember at least getting a tough play where I was involved in it. Yeah. No, there you go. I don't. Good. Because if I was involved in it, it might have not been a perfect game. <laughs> <laughs> The only the only ball that came anywhere close to you was like the first one hit, and uh, you guys is right fielder that year. I think it was Tames. He oh yeah, he yep. made a pretty nice catch in the gap, but there wasn't like he was so dominant that game that there was like nothing else really, like a couple ground. Easy street. Yeah, easy street. Yeah, so like what I. I I've never been a part of a perfect game or a no hitter. And I, I was a catcher for a long time. I came close a couple of times catching a couple of guys in college and stuff like that, like a couple outs away. And then someone would get a, you know, a squibbler or something like that. But at the major league scale with thousands and thousands of people with one of the game's best pitchers on the mound, like what is the atmosphere in the stadium throughout as the game's progressing? He's getting closer and closer. Oh, if, if anyone's telling you that they don't realize it's going on, that's BS because everyone realizes it's going on. As we as it was happening, and I think it was about the fifth or sixth inning, you kind of look over and you're like, "Oh wow, that scoreboard says zeros all across it." You're going, "Okay." All of a sudden, it's like not that you would not have done this in the first place, but you're going, "If there's anything close, I'm laying out." Yeah. Like I'm not going to be the guy that something happens in front of me and I don't go full bar for it and lay out, and everyone is all over me for it. Yeah. So. Um, I think it was about the fourth, fifth, sixth inning, something like that. He realized something special, but the most special thing about it was his dominance, like you said. 
Um, and then, uh, again, you brought it up. I wasn't, I, I didn't even realize that I had not even made a catch. I hadn't even been a part of that game. Hence probably why it was a perfect game in the first place. <laughs> you know, like seriously. Um, but no, to be a part of history like that, and I'll never forget. It was more so like the, the, in the ninth inning, like the, the rumble of the crowd and, and that kind of thing. But it wasn't even like the crowd was cheering. They were all on their feet. I'll never forget it. They were all on their feet. And it's almost like a, a European soccer game where they're going nuts, but they weren't saying anything. Hmm. You could feel the energy in the stadium, you know, and, but it was dead quiet. But you could still feel that energy. And, and then finally when I think it was Sean Rodriguez and it was a sinker yeah. inside. So caught him looking. May have been inside. We don't know. But you ain't going to be that umpire. No, right? You're ringing him. <laughs> caught him looking. You rung him up. And he, he does the iconic pose. Yeah. And then we're all storming the pitchers, man. It was unbelievable to be a part of that. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big Mariners fan. So, like, the, these kind of – these are these are things in my childhood that, like, pace my life kind of thing, mm-hmm. right? Like, these yeah. memories where, like – 2001 I was six or seven years old but I remember sitting in front of the tv with my family watching like the 2001 Mariners you know win 116 I remember you know Griffey getting I don't remember Griffey getting traded but I remember him coming back and I remember like Ichiro having 200 hits every single year for as like long as I can remember kind of thing and like that Felix Hernandez game is one of those moments where like I know where I was like it was 2012 I was sitting like I wasn't watching the game, but I remember looking and seeing it on Facebook and being like, oh, my God, Felix Hernandez just threw a perfect game. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that'll go down in history for sure. Yeah. Uh, Towards the end of your time with the Mariners, Paxton came up. So what what was that like kind of like what – obviously, he's another BC guy, and he was – pretty good you know coming up and i'm just curious like it wasn't you, bad you took him deep though <laughs> didn't you believe it he's in the book yeah don't, <laughs> hey don't let him tell you otherwise either <laughs> uh when he when he got up like you know a lot of new york people a lot of new york people on twitter they call him the robot and i'm just curious like kind of how he is like his personality no he's great man like he's great he's uh he's just I don't even know how to explain it. Like he's, he's not a, a very vocal guy, um, but he's, he's one of the guys like he's, he, he is a typical, you don't see him until he says something funny and then everyone laughs. <laughs> he's like one of those guys. Right. Um, but what a professional man. And, and his career obviously took off. He's with New York now. And I, you know, I just hope he can stay healthy because, He's, I mean, he's got an electric arm, yeah. or he really does, and he's something special. And you just hope that he can stay healthy and really show you what he's got for a full season. Um, he's special, man. Like yeah. they, he, he comes around every now and again. You know what I mean? Like he's not that everyday starting pitcher. He's a, he's number one in a lot of teams, but um, as long as he's healthy and 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 as long as his arm's going good, but he's yeah. special. 